Casey Gray here, and on this video, we're gonna break down what a general contractor does and share some tips on what you need to do in order to become a successful general contractor. Now, if you're a homeowner watching this video, you're not interested in becoming a general contractor, but you're wondering what a general contractor would do for you and why you might need to hire them, essentially a general contractor will manage a project that has multiple trades involved. So for example, if you're going to build a deck, you could just hire a contractor who can build decks. But if you're going to do an addition, you're going to need to know a lot more than just how to build a deck. You're going to need to excavate, you're going to need to do the foundation, you're going to need to frame, you're going to need to do insulation, siding, electrical plumbing. There's going to be all sorts of trades involved. Even if you get into a bathroom or a kitchen renovation, for example, there's a lot of trades involved. So those are the types of projects that you're going to want to hire a general contractor for. The most important part that a general contractor does is communicate. So that's communication with the client, communication with the team, and communication with the subcontractors as well as suppliers. There is a lot that falls under the roles and responsibilities as a general contractor. However, some of those are setting clear expectations of the process and the scope of work. There's a liability that's required in terms of liability insurance, but also taking liability for whatever's happening on site, taking responsibility health and safety on site, keeping up with the schedule and updating it regularly, ordering supplies and materials, doing takeoffs, managing the budget, notifying the subcontractors or any trades involved with any changes to that schedule or changes to the scope of work, notifying the client of any changes to the scope or the budget, collecting their selections and organizing everything, and the list goes on. And as a contractor, as a general contractor, you need to be on top of all of this. Now here at The Conscious Builder, technically we're a little bit more than just a general contractor because we do a lot of carpentry work in-house as well. A lot of people come to us because of our experience in building high-performance homes. So we do a lot of that envelope work, meaning window and door installations and air sealing and weather barriers and insulation and so forth. We do that all in-house. We also take care of a lot of the finish carpentry so that we have control over what things look like at the end of the project. But that's not necessarily required as a general contractor, but it is something that you could add to your list if you want to be able to offer more services. So what does it take to become a successful general contractor? Well, first I think you need to ask yourself how big of a team or how big of a company do you wanna have? Because it takes a lot of work to become a successful general contractor. However, you can be a small company and still be a successful general contractor. Or you can do what we do and have a larger team and offer more services and still be a general contractor. So we're a general contractor that also provides carpentry services on all of the projects that we do here in-house. Now I've broken this down into four simple steps on how to become a successful general contractor. Number one, I think this goes for all aspects, any business, is work on yourself. I can't push this enough. Uh, you need to work on yourself. Business is tough. Life uh, will throw you curveballs all the time. You need to be able to handle anything that's gonna come your way. Now, from a general contractor's perspective, we're gonna be dealing with a lot of problems and problem solving, so you need to be able to solve those problems and be in the right state of mind. So working on yourself, taking time for yourself is super important in order to be a successful general contractor. Now, if you don't have any general car contracting experience, I would also recommend as part of working on yourself that you go work for another general contractor for a certain amount of time to see if that's what you want, first of all, and if you actually enjoy the work. So that'll give you a lot of experience and then it'll save you a lot of time and money in the long run because you won't make some of those mistakes on your dollar, you might make it on their dollar, unfortunately, but hopefully they're training and working with you and it's not something that's gonna happen over and over again. Here, we like to say that you know, perfection is not possible. It's actually not a standard at all because it isn't possible, but we do want mastery. And that means we're just better than we were yesterday. Does that mean we're not gonna make mistakes? No, it just means that when we do make a mistake, we're gonna learn from it and we're not gonna make it again and we're gonna continue moving forward and growing and evolving and getting better. Number two is to hire the right team. This is super important as you start to grow. You wanna make sure you have the right people on the bus. So there's the old adage of, you know, fire 
quickly and hire slowly. Uh, that is actually true. We do have a hiring process here at The Conscious Builder. We put everybody through this hiring process. Now we weren't at the beginning and we ran into issues, but now we put them through a process where they get interviewed by three different people in three different locations. Uh, and we check at least three references before we bring anybody onto the team. So is this going to work every single time? No, because we can't necessarily test their skills during an interview process, but it does help us find the right people for the team. Number three is implement internal processes. So this is something that we haven't been as good at in the past, and we've been working very hard on it over the last four or five years in terms of bringing in processes and making sure that we follow them. That's the other difficult part about this. It's easy to come up with a process. It's a little bit more difficult to make sure that you're actually following it and measuring it and seeing if it works and then adapting it if need be. But when you can start to create processes that everyone on your team follows and they understand and they can continue to improve on, that's when you can really start to pick up some really good momentum and you can start to really improve your general contracting business. For example, a process that we've implemented is to do with site safety. So we have what we call Safety Wednesdays. So every Wednesday, the leads fill out a safety inspection form and they upload it to a Slack channel that we have. And if somebody gets happens to get hurt, not necessarily on Wednesday, but if somebody happens to get hurt on site, there's an incident report that gets filled out, it gets put in a binder. So we have a whole process set up around safety and making sure that our sites continuously stay safe so that we don't run into issues in the future. And number four is communicate. Communicate, communicate, communicate. There has never been a client in the history of the world <laughs> that has ever said, that company communicated with me too much. No one's ever gonna get upset at you for communicating. We need to over communicate. And that's with everybody, like what we were talking about at the beginning of this video. It's with the clients, it's with the subtrades, it's with the suppliers, it's with the team. It's just communication so that everybody understands what's happening when. And this can come in many different forms. So one of the processes that we have is within the fact that we use Builder Trend as a software to manage our business. And we're starting to use more and more of Builder Trend now. But within that, you can communicate the schedule by updating the schedule and releasing it to the client and giving them an update, right? You can communicate work on site through daily logs and pictures, which is all done through Builder Trend. You can communicate through emails, through text messages, through phone calls, whatever it may be. It really depends on the situation, depends on your client, and it depends what you're working with in terms of technology. So I do need to point out that this is not a destination that you're going after. Sure, you may be looking to become a general contractor, for example, or looking to become a better general contractor, but you're always going to be looking to become a better general contractor. I've never got to a point where I'm like, oh, well that's done, I'm never gonna have to look at that again, because that doesn't happen. You know, this is life, we're always growing, this is business. We need to be constantly looking at our business, what's working, what's not working, and improving on that, and just continuing to move forward until maybe we don't wanna do it anymore, or until our kids take it over, whatever it may be, but it's a non-stop, ever-evolving journey that we're on as a general contractor and as a business owner. You're also going to have to make sure that you understand what's required to become a general contractor wherever you plan on providing services. Here where we are, we don't need a carpentry license, technically, although I am a licensed carpenter and a lot of our team is a licensed carpenter, but we also don't need a general contracting license, but that's not the same everywhere you might have to get these things or, and you might have to get other things as well. There's requirements for businesses where we live in terms of getting HST. There's requirements if we wanna build custom homes in terms of registering and becoming a tear down builder. So there's all sorts of requirements there as well. But what I would recommend if you don't know what you require is you join your local home builders association and you ask questions and you learn from people who have been doing it longer than you have. That's where I started, that's where I learned a ton and I highly recommend it. A big thanks to Warmboard, who is the sponsor of this video. Warmboard is the premier whole home radiant floor heating solution in North America. Their best in class award winning panels promise greater comfort, performance, and energy savings. The Warmboard comfort system offers faster response times, easier installations, lower energy use, and unparalleled comfort. If you're looking for radiant floor heating solutions, check out warmboard.com or click on the link in the video description below.